Grand Rising, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. Today we wanted to kind of do some tarot readings or some oracle cards, not tarot necessarily. I did put tarot on the thing, but yeah, I would say oracle daily message uh, to be more precise. And um, I have the sacred geometry cards. Um, pretty cool, has some pretty cool designs. I guess this um, person gets like downloads of different geometric figures and stuff like that and has put them into a card deck, which is pretty cool. Um, so we thought we would just pull some cards and just kind of discuss where we're at, um, you know, energetically. Um, and, you know, maybe the cosmos and stuff like that. Um, so we can start. Do you want to go? Maybe you can pull first, Pam. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the shadow, <laughs> shadow and light. Uh, uh, mm. Cause we were just talking a little bit about some of the shadow stuff. So just yeah. seeing what maybe is coming up in the collective. Wow. This active deck. They're like flying out everywhere. <laughs> The whole entire deck is the shadow. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So let's see. There's five yeah. cards in that that flew out. Um, wow. Five. Yeah. So the first one is like ghosts of the past, the past mm -hmm. returning for a time. So mm -hmm. with that, right, like looking at the past of relationships of people of wounds situations themes so <laughs> cycles repeating right whatever wasn't healed and um i would say outgrown right because when you're still mm -hmm. in a frequency of the same story like right it kind of continues to play out until you close the chapter and change the narrative um so really, especially with Mercury retrograde right now, bringing up situations, the past usually um, returns so that we can reflect, so that we can pause and take some time to really discover um, new new things mm -hmm. so that it mm -hmm. can change. Um, with that came out Callie, the goddess Callie from death comes rebirth. So mm -hmm. a lot of intense energy may cause frustration and overwhelm um it's usually when the ego feels bombarded <laughs> with, with with the frustration and the stress and whatnot like it doesn't right it doesn't want to go forward anymore it doesn't want to go down this path um so it's where like little like small ego deaths kind of occur so looking looking at what we're letting go of right doesn't need to be part of our lives any longer so that a rebirth um a new path a new narrative a new situation can emerge and then with that is count your blessings um and it's really about just being in gratitude, gratitude. so even though things are really intense there you know energy may be shaking up situations in our lives and again trying to just figure out how to navigate it it's just going back to your blessings and what you have to actually be grateful for because when you shift your perspective and you focus on all of the positive things that you know you that you've created that you enjoy that you love and you realize the universe is you know giving you blessings um when you navigate from that space of gratitude it allows for more blessings and more gratitude to come in and then the last two were kind of were together they fell out together and it's it's cool because it's um both of them have like an, angel wings fairy wings and one is the lantern fairy who is walking through darkness with a light um and it's about a clear solution coming and then the other one is snow angel and the signs are already with you and so there's like a a snow angel standing there but there's a snow angel imprint behind her in the snow so that is the universe really trying to guide us um so the answers that we're seeking the problems you know that we're trying to solve um we don't need to force it we don't need to force any problem solving we need to just like kind of surrender and trust and know that 
everything is unfolding and happening for a reason and that in divine timing you're gonna like you'll get that download you'll get that creative insight the solution will come you'll just kind of know what to do and how to move forward and then just looking like for signs like you were just talking about the geometry right Mm -hmm. um there's Mm -hmm. languages all around us whether it's shapes numbers colors music um so so the universe is guiding us so when you ask for those signs when you pay attention to those signs when you notice synchronicities listen to those apply those trust your intuition um because the universe is guiding us through this intense time of healing the past so that we can close out chapters and move forward into new beginnings with with gratitude and blessings um for the path that we're on Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds really, it's actually on point, right? Because it's yeah. like the old is resurfacing. And then it's like, okay, are we going to continue that? Or are we going to put it to death, right? Because there, there has to be this clearing for the rebirth. So it's like a good progression. And part of, and one of them that we talked about earlier that I want to kind of just hit on, maybe talk about for a moment is gratitude. Mm. That I think we just, it's, it's talked about often, but are we really, really practicing gratitude? Like that's, uh, to me, that's a question like, because sometimes I forget too, you know, we're so, we get so caught up in like the hardships and okay, we're in a trying time. This is like, this is like no mystery to anybody out there, but we're going through a lot of collective crap right now. Mm. And we feel it. I mean, we could feel the weight of it. And so it's so easy to get drawn into fear mongering too. And so, and I think a lot of what they put out there right, is like fear, 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 fear. So every, there's a lot of people living in fear. I can tell you the other day, I just went to the store, an example, and this man, he bought, I, I thought he was buying food for the homeless shelter. That's what I, I didn't know. Right. So he had these cans and cans and cans of things and i was like in my heart of hearts i was like oh you know this person is like you know give you so and then i just asked him i said oh so are you is it for work and he's like i'm stocking up but but he said it in a way that it was like he was afraid that something major was gonna happen like there was this fear that and, and, you know, I, I get it, you know, and, and, and it happens all the time, right? You have these people go to the grocery stores, a big storm's coming in, something like that, or there's right. the war or, I, you know, whatever it was. And I just thought about this person. I was like, what are they holding on to that they're so afraid that they think something's going to happen? Like they must be sheltering themselves or something. It was just weird. The, the energy was very strange. And my sister and I were both like, uh was that about because he got very upset about it the question but i really yeah. did i thought he was doing it for work i thought he worked in like a homeless shelter yeah. and, and and so and so and i'm i'm saying that because i think that we're carrying this collective weight of fear um pain sorrow suffering we're chained and i and i feel like we forget to see the goodness in life because as soon as he did that, I thought, well, I'm not afraid. I don't need to stock up on food. There's food all around us. There's an abundance all around us. I'm just so grateful that I can breathe. I'm so grateful I can see the trees. Like, I'm just so grateful to be alive in here, that we have access to food here. You know, it is kind of easy for us or whatever. But that collective fear keeps us from the gratitude keeps us from that positivity right and that's kind of what you were talking about earlier like why are we always so focused on the negative like we're hardwired for that i know and and we kind of can just go down that road well this needs to get better this needs to do this this it's like but does it like what is what's all the good that we're doing and what are we grateful for what can we celebrate what you know what i mean and there's so much beauty in this world like you woke up today you're breathing your heart is working. There are people right now who are laying in beds. Like I have a friend who's laying in the hospital bed right now and their heart is not working the way it should. And you know what? He's still grateful. He's still happy that he has that. So it's like you can find gratitude in anything. 
And I think that's what helps us to maybe transcend these narratives is focusing on that part, focusing on good. Yeah, it's scary to change your life or to have like things fall apart. There's a tower event, your life is changing, you don't know what's next and you have to let go and there's a lot of fear, but there's also a lot of greatness and gratitude that you're letting go of narratives that don't serve you. You know what I mean? So it's like the gratitude I feel is like the big one. I, I just, I, I really, and I think I'm working on that too. What am I grateful for? You know, and then focus on that, the silver linings and putting to rest the things that don't serve me and focusing on the things that do. Like I just, it's, but it's so hard. <laughs> That's not an easy one, right? In the collective. Right. So yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to say that because that's yeah. kind of what came up for me is just being grateful and focusing on the silver lining. That's kind of what you were talking about earlier. Focus yeah, on the absolutely. I you actually know? did a reading for a woman once using, um, cause that's one of the decks I use in, in my readings. Um, and the gratitude card came up and, uh, I can't remember like the question exactly. But she was just smiling and happy because she had been consciously um, with intention using gratitude to remove blocks. Mm. And it was reaffirming that for her, that like your gratitude, um, your state of gratitude is helping you elevate out of, you know, mm -hmm. these lower vibrational kind of energies and bringing you up into a higher space. Um and so like that stayed with me because when she just saw it and she smiled and she's like, I've been doing it with intention. And like, so I feel like it's just proof, right? With that kind of law of attraction or, you know, whatever, what you put out, what is what you get back. Um, so, so yeah, it's kind of beautiful when the cards confirm <laughs> those, mm -hmm, those messages mm -hmm, for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And the death and the rebirth, the like calling and all that stuff is really important. Yeah. Um, you know, but to not repeat the patterns, that's the hard part or to know when to let go or change the narrative yeah. as well. So, yeah. um, but I, I do feel like that's kind of what's happening in the collective. A bunch of shit is surfacing for people. And I think if you go back, I would say the start of the collective really opening up to that is COVID when COVID happened and everybody had to just <laughs> deal with each other. Yeah. Oh my God. I laugh because my God, people were, <laughs> you know, I don't. <laughs> the collective was crazy. <laughs> we don't, we don't, because, okay, here's the deal. Let's just think about the family unit, right? It's just in my head. I start laughing at so because I'm like, my God. The, the parents typically are at work, kids typically go to school. So maybe, you know, they spend more time with their work people than they do with their own family, right? Mostly. Um, and so you tolerate the people that you live with, right? Or you really love them. Some people really do love each other, but sometimes it's just like, well, we can tolerate each other because, well, I don't see you, but for maybe three hours a day anyway, right? Because then it's like, you get home, you make your meal, you go to bed, right? And, and, and the kids were at school all day, they come home and then they eat and go to bed. And then I have to get up and do it all over again, right? So I, I'm tolerating you. But when COVID hit, <laughs> some of these people are like, I don't even like you. I don't even know. <laughs> like, I just don't even, I don't even want to be around you. What am I doing? Right. And, and what it did is it just drew up this, and I'm just laughing because it, it did to everybody. Like everybody had to face their relationships. You know what I mean? Nobody got, nobody was able to get away from that. Like the entire world had right. to face their relationships because the whole world was like, this was a world thing. Right. Um, Lockdown. <laughs> exactly. And it, it changed the dynamic of relationships in a huge way. You know what I mean? I mean, just yeah. completely exposed um, these narratives. Right. And, and it's like, <laughs> Who do we like? Who do we not like? Who do we let go of? How do we maneuver through? And and so I think we're just dealing with this like um the repercussions or the backlash or the aftermath or whatever word you want to use of COVID. You know what I mean? In the collective. It's just kind of surfaced this 
narrative up. And it's like, now we're looking at relationships, our jobs, you know, our relationship to our jobs. What, what do we want? How do we walk away? How do we sever these, um, these things, you know, and Kali like is a really good goddess to work with. Um, because again, it's that death and rebirth. Like you have to, you have to die those tiny ego deaths like you were talking about, because now you're trying to figure out who the hell you are. I mean, it just, it shook everything up. I know with COVID for me, everything, my whole life, my whole, everything shifted and changed. Um, and I'm still feeling that energy from that, you know, the backlash from it and, and what it means. Now I'm barely emerging in this new identity, just barely. So I'm just like the baby coming up from these, these old patterns and, and severed them completely where it's like this narrative can no, I can no longer be tied to this narrative. Um, and it, and it's crazy, but more meaningful relationships, more, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So agree. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, like when you but, let go of the things that are holding you back, <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, it's you find more alignment um, mm -hmm. of where you're supposed to go and where you are. Yeah, so just it's just crazy. Just think about COVID and how people just didn't like each other. <laughs> They're like, how did I? I was tolerating you, and I don't really like you. So I think I'm gonna go. You know what I mean? It's like, and then these, some of these people were trapped in like core things. Like they just didn't have time to pause to really reflect and look at like what they had built or the relationships that they had or, you know what I mean? Everything was go, 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 go. And now the whole world dynamic has shifted and changed in terms of that. So just, it's a trip. It's just a trip. But I think um, I do like the gratitude. What were the other cards? I can't remember the other last two. Um... Oh, the signs are with you and a clear solution. So sometimes I think um, we get stuck in like the problem solving of it, right? And we just kind of will solve problems in the same way. <laughs> or we yep. try to force a solution when it's yep. just not time. Um, we have to go through the uncomfortableness. We have to go through the transition. You know, there are lessons we have to learn. So you can't always have a solution right away. It takes time for it to come on and play out. And mm -hmm. this is part of the divine timing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You do got to let, that's the hard part, the surrender and the emerging. And I, you know, it's funny collectively, because I think we are going through that. And it's funny because it got gardens of delight was the first card that I pulled from my Oracle deck was the sacred geometry. Um, it's, you know, it's just these beautiful flowers and, how they're emerging and that that's like perfect right there's this dragon that's on the card as well and it's like these flowers are just emerging from this back of the dragon um but and then there's like this fire in like the valley that's kind of wielding and probably these and i i'm not sure do you know what those flowers are i'm not sure, sure if you know what those are no i'm not sure um, i can't see it I'm not sure what this flowers are, but it might say it in the book, but it's funny because that's what we were talking about is emerging. And I think we're at this place of emergence where people are starting to surrender and understand that, yes, so we, we take determinism, free will, all these concepts and ideas. And the reality is, is that, that we let the universe just emerge within us and 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 radiate outside of us right and just kind of circulate around us and move through us that's you know you start to blossom and i feel like a lot of people are starting to get that they're starting to are you at least you hear i'm hearing it you know from other people like i'm just allowing things to surface and emerge and surrender and let the universe guide it um so that's gardens of delight and it is delightful, um, you know, if you allow the universe to take the wheel, there's a couple things I think that show up and, and you can say what you think might show up. Um, you have to be patient. <laughs> that word. <laughs> I wish I could throw it away, but. <laughs> yeah, patience is a big one on the journey of being human. <laughs> 
Especially if you're letting the universe build the garden. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And letting yourself just surrender and letting it bloom. It's the patience is a hard one because there are cycles. You know what yes. I mean? There's 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 times when you're putting planting seeds and you have to cultivate them and you have to you have to, you know, nurture them and 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 let them develop and then wait for them to emerge and then they have to grow in that emergent state as well to fully blossom and right. and then the cycle goes on and on. You know what I mean? And yeah. so that is hard. That is a so patience is a big one, I think, on that one. But to receive that and like you said surrender to that and then the next one is receiving so that's like a perfect like follow up to that it's just a woman with her her hands open stars in her hands and the stars kind of moving up out of her head so kind of going up the chakras in out of, into the cosmos or like these dna spirals around her as well it's like this radiated light of just receiving what the universe has to give you um so perfect alignment right and then and then the last one of course you know sometimes you just pull a card you're just like you gotta love them it's together <laughs> so you're allowing yourself to bloom so it's like the collective is like starting to emerge right and and it's about receiving the gifts that are coming to you so not forcing but just receiving what is yours um and that receiving before i go into together receiving too um is also knowing what's not for you right and i think we you and i have had these conversations quite a bit where it's like we get these sparks of opportunity and then it's like nope didn't go through and then we're like well it's not for me and you're just kind of surrendering right but in the past i think things would have been so i don't know how you feel about that like when opportunities show up and then they kind of go away um it would just be a blow to the heart for me sometimes and i'm like am i not good enough am i this and that instead of seeing it as that's not for me it wasn't for me there's something else there that's for me and there's something for everybody because there's so much right there's so much abundance um so it's the receiving of that abundance and allowing yourself to to blossom and emerge and receive the abundance and what's for you but also letting go of that that's not for you and that's everything relationships and jobs and whatever it is let it go let it go because something whatever is going to emerge like i can just tell you the last couple of days what's emerging for me is exactly for me to the t I have not forced anything. Things are just coming out, right? And I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool. I've been patient for for three months. Okay, I know that's not a long time. For me, that's like a lifetime. Um, three or four months, right? So there's that. So the emergence of receiving this energy, right? And hands open, heart open, throat open, all of your 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 chakras or points on your body just completely open to receiving all the energy that's flowing through you to magnetize and manifest the things that are meant for you. Specifically for your DNA, specifically for your code, right? The gene keys too. Like I, I see that a lot of the gene keys in this part too, because it's like your DNA was pre-programmed, predestined to receive the gifts that you were supposed to receive. And then together is the last card and it's um it's a man and a woman um and they're standing with their arms spread um and we have both the um uh, sacred masculine triangle represented in here um and then these circles that are kind of radiating out too and then some kind of like lightning um and then the the um life the flower of life um and it says together um, and so, you know, that's like the perfect card. You know, we can't do it alone. We have to do it together. And a lot of it is in harmony with our own internal. We talk a lot about that internal, external, uh, I'm sorry, internal feminine and masculine energies that exist within us. You know, we can't receive fully until we've harmonized those and balanced out those energies inside of us. 
And that has been such a huge thing. And once we do it on the internal, collectively, we can do it externally. And it, on the bigger scale in, in relationships, in community, and then it just expands and ripples out. So I think these were really perfect cards, actually. I kind of like them. It's like your yours were the shadow and mine were like the brighter side of like emergence into receiving your divine gifts, what's meant for you, and then figuring out how to do that with other people, but first within yourself and then with other people so that it can radiate outward and manifest outward into the collective. So there you yeah, go. nice. I like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really cool. Mm. It's like a pretty good progressive thing. Yeah. And I was thinking when you were talking about the first card with the blooming, like we've mm-hmm. just reached the peak of summer here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the Northern hemisphere and, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Like gardens are blooming, all of those things. Um, but also like that internal garden of what we create within our mind and, and whatnot, mm-hmm. and like our projects and, and all those things. So if you think of yourself as a garden, it's yep. like, what do you need to weed? What do you need, mm-hmm. you know, to let go of? That's not maybe a healthy <laughs> plant yep. or, you know, a healthy idea, a healthy thing for you. Um, so that, yeah, we can, I like that, the receiving. And when you were talking about like the card on the together with the lightning, mm-hmm. even, right? There's that kind of like stormy energy yep. that intense energy that's trying to bring us together trying to unite us and it's like if you can stand through the storm if you can kind of get through that chaos with an open heart right and not shut down and not like push away and pull away and isolate <laughs> and all of those things um that together kind of feeling yeah <laughs> the internal and then it appears in the external yeah That's boy is that hard right the like not pulling away not closing down the heart man woof yeah. i have been doing some major heart work it's i did not i can tell you this i did not have a clue i mean i kind of did but not nearly yeah as much realize how closed off my heart is like i just didn't know and i didn't understand get out or you you need to do stuff in your room okay i'm on the podcast right now thanks (laughs) i know but i'm sorry but they have to come in so so sorry (laughs) apparently somebody's here to do something um but i can tell you that um that my heart you know is literally the hardest thing for me to open up and i didn't realize how blocked it was i just didn't have a clue i had no idea like i just i was like yeah my heart's open blah 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 Mm, not really you know what i mean it's open when i want it to be but fully to be vulnerable and open because i'm vulnerable and i talk about my life on here and you know vulnerability and heart stuff is really important but this was like beyond You know, I'm sorry. I think somebody's here to do maintenance. Uh, uh, nothing like Mercury retro. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the heart is definitely um, such a vulnerable energy field, right? Because with that chakra, the, the heart connects to another heart. And so you got that quantum entanglement. It's, it's a really interesting chakra um when you when you start to like dive in and maybe study it and then you know get to attuned with your own heart space um but yeah i don't think a lot of people recognize how shut down their hearts are until it's triggered to open and then usually that fear and that vulnerability so with that if anything i'll just pull a couple of chakra Chakra. ones because i just got this brand new um chakra oracle deck um because i did a class on chakras recently and i do energy healing for people um around the chakras to balance them um so looking at collectively 
the root with abundance and you had talked about that like the lack of abundance kind of mentality that you know is the opposite of gratitude when people are living in a fear and don't feel like they have enough um mm -hmm. so really with abundance and the root just seeing what you are feeling protected and because with the root right it's about safety protection being provided for so just looking at like abundance and how that's surviving and then there's a throat chakra with truth and mm -hmm. this one has like the scales and one scale is on fire and one scale is like water um so balancing i think the emotions right balancing our our fuel and our fire and our emotional state but speaking our truth and just really communicating our our internal truth not saying things to hurt people you know not spreading lies and deceit but just being honest and open about our internal state which can be very vulnerable and scary um and then there's visualization with the third eye so again going to like intuition and the you know what what you consciously with intention um want to manifest right as well as just trusting your own intuition um and then an earth star chakra of grounding mm -hmm. and it's just the roots of a tree really so mm -hmm. feeling strong like a tree in ourselves when we feel grounded when we feel safe and secure in a space so looking at them together I think it's about really for the collective with the chakra energy, feeling grounded and secure to be able to grow, to be able to dig into the earth through the darkness, through, you know, the unpleasant things that happen, but knowing that we grow through the dirt, we grow through the darkness. And then we also like the branches, right? Branches break off in stormy weather, but there's growth, there's flowering that happens with trees. There's fruit that is nourished. Um, so looking at that with abundance and how abundance is showing up in your space because abundance is more than just money too you know mm -hmm. like an abundance of friendship an abundance of support and love an abundance uh, of just like food <laughs> and and being you know seen and heard and those types of things so abundance isn't always just money and finances but just speaking our truth on what we're visualizing for ourselves so that we can feel a strong sense of grounded protection abundant life um energy flowing within and around us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep absolutely yeah i love that i think so yeah sorry i sorry i had a little breakdown there with a communication and the i guess i have to do something in my room or whatever anyway um maintenance um but yes i you know i was i was talking about the heart um and i want to spend some time just talking about that or going back to that because <laughs> i had to cut it kind of short it was like but opening up the heart i i don't know i i would say this maybe people think they're opening their heart and i'm not saying they're not because some people wear their heart on their sleeve but when you're not wearing your heart on your sleeve and you have it so protected and you think that you're opening it up, it's like, are you truly opening it up? You know, are just giving pieces of that without fully connecting or opening. I could tell you that I was, I personally wasn't. And I thought I was, you know, and it's not until it's not until you're connected, like you said, to another person, right. Or, or you're truly working through it with another person or you're trying to heal with another person because like my heart can be open by myself right like i could be like yes me told by myself but then when you're with another person in front of them and you're having to really open up completely to something outside of you then you realize wow i've been protecting this heart for so long that i haven't let really let anybody in um and it's not a bad thing, you know what I mean? I think it's a good thing. I think it's good to have the the protection or whatever for yourself. Um, but not to the point where 
you can't the the energy in the chakras right does it move up so i think a lot of the the solar plexus stuff is really important the 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 grounding the rooting the one that you brought up in terms of like rooting and grounding which is such a an important concept right i always talk about hundred eyes of course kung fu comes up for me because hundred eyes it's like you know it starts with the roots um and it starts with the pulling up and yeah, growing down into the darkness, but also taking the nutrients from the darkness, right? Taking what what's needed, right? So, and, and transforming it up and moving it up your chakras, right? Into the root, like you said, where the root and then the sacral, like just moving that energy up and then moving it up from there to the solar plexus but to me it seems like the well for my my own journey it seems like the hardest part was the solar plexus to the heart because that right there you've taken all the nutrients you've moved it up and then the solar plexus is the will to do it but then it has to sort of radiate through the heart energy that heart energy has to open up to it literally because it's the vibra vibratory energy that's magnetizing the things to you it's the 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 thing that's vibrating the thing that you're asking right because if you th thought about it like the pulling it from the cosmos because you have the microcosm and macrocosm and at the macrocosm where you're pulling it through the third eye from the cosmos into the head, down into the heart, and then radiating that out to manifest comes through your throat, right? In your words. But to pull the nutrients from the root up to through the um the sacral into the, the solar plexus and into the heart, that is a whole other connection which for me, I'm realizing like, holy crap, like I've been pulling, I think a lot from like the macrocosm, which is probably why I'm always thinking in big systems, because that's where my heart's radiating, but never from the microcosm, which is that sexual energy, all of that, you know, the stuff that we talk about, like pulling that and then radiating that out. And it is the heart that connects the both. So it's just, to me, it's like crazy because it's all working inside of me. And I did sort of um, talk about this, or I actually just put a post up and the post was about, you know, we are the stars, right? The, the cards, the stars, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, we can go and we can reach out to that and we can look to that and we could try to understand that. But at the end of the day, we have it within us. We don't even need to go to the stars and to the cards and to all that because it's in us. And when we deeply connect, because I was just thinking about this, Pam, that's why I'm telling you this and, and our listeners, I was like, holy crap, like, this is why i felt so connected because you know they, they the astrologers all this stuff all the stars the cards you know and we do and they're they're good they're good tools but it's all within us and i felt that for the first time i could feel it all within me without i don't need to consult the oracles. I don't need to consult the stars. I don't need to, because it's all inside of me. It exists within me because we are it and it is us. And it was the chakras, right? That really opened up that for me with the sacral to the heart, which was just like, holy crap. And, and I'm still learning how to open that up and, and, and be vulnerable to the point where I astro, I was able to astro project to my friend and he felt it, which to me is really crazy. And that's my friend who's like sick right now, you know, and, and not feeling good. And he was like, oh my God, you're with me. And I said, I am with you. He's like, I can see you. I can. And to the point where he can hear the messages that I'm sending him without me even having to call him. It's beautiful. beautiful. I mean, it's just crazy that, because that was the missing link for me in my transcendence, because I was like, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. There is so much work happening between those two points and the heart. Mm, 
Absolutely. I'm really understanding because I, I I know this, like I knew the information, right? We know this, like we, sages, time, but when you embody it, it's a whole other thing. Yeah. It, it's yeah, just absolutely. a whole, it's just a whole other thing that I know that the heart is the center for transmutation. I know it's the place that vibrates the energy and magnetizes it. I understand how powerful the heart is, but was I really using my heart? to its full potential. No, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning how to use my heart to its full potential. Right. right. And it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's just crazy. You don't need anything else. You just don't need anything else. It's just crazy. I'm like, I don't, what do I need? Like I have my heart, my heart is like this energy vibrate. It's like, boom, boom. I mean, it's right. all it does. <laughs> it's it's right. constantly, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, right. crap. like, it just, it's crazy. The embodiment of it is just crazy. And I'm like, I think I'm able to now connect to people across time and space, which is not something, I mean, I have, but I think they're feeling it to a right. point where it's heightened, especially those that I'm like, okay, I'm intentionally going to connect with you. It's crazy. That's all I know. So I'm sorry. Yeah. I had to go on that little tiny. No, no, it's like, beautiful. I'm glad you shared like, that. No, I can relate yeah. because I feel like I was the other way. I was, um, well, no, the same, I guess, realistically, because I've always been like the mind upward, right? <laughs> the, the crown, the soul star, you know, so learning to anchor and ground, um, was truly a, a test and, you know, um, my own kind of journey path, a lesson I had to learn and master. And now I feel very integrated and whole. And I feel like I can travel all three realms, right? The underworld, the middle world and the upper world. And I had that experience actually this weekend where I was very much in between the physical and the spiritual planes. Mm -hmm. And I kept mm -hmm. anchoring myself. And it, for a moment, there was a little bit of fear of the unknown of where's this journey going to take me because it's a vast ocean, right? Of, of right. universal consciousness out there. And there's some low vibrational dark energies. Um, and with that ego fear, of the unknown, I instantly had that heartfelt reminder of you're safe, you're protected, you're loved. And it automatically shifted me into a higher vibrational plane of universal consciousness, you know, source, love, oneness, whatever. And so I was able to sit in that space in between energy realms and, you know, like just kind of navigating this human spiritual journey integrationally at once. And, and it was really cool. And with that, be able to hold space for other people that were around me um, that were having similar experiences. And when you were talking about the heart, I kind of shuffled the chakra deck again and I thought, okay, you know, a heart, if we're going to look at the heart, like, let's look at the heart. And I, um, I happened to flip it over to the bottom of the deck and there was a heart card <laughs> and it was forgiveness. Oh. So like, I thought that was pretty, pretty in sync and pretty cool. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing when we get jaded by other people, we close off the heart. And forgiveness is so hard for the ego because we don't want to forgive other people. But really what it comes to is self-love, self-worth and forgiveness for yourself. You know, like when you forgive other people, there's um, that mirroring, right? Where you're being able to forgive them, but it's really, it really truly is for you. Um, and then that shifts going back to that first, you know, pulling of five cards, the death rebirth and all of those things of the past. Um, when we're able to just forgive and let go, it changes the narrative. So now we don't have to play out those cycles and patterns, you know, with new people. Um, it changes the whole dynamic. So like you said, now it elevates us for more meaningful relationships because you're not bringing up the, the things that were untrustworthy or hurtful 
um, where forgiveness had to be a, a part of that narrative. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> I know it is pretty cool. It is. And I feel my spiritual um, power more than ever, which is just, it's heightened. And that was the, that was like the missing key. Yeah. And, and it's still there. I have, I still have a lot of work to do for sure, because um, I could feel it in the solar plexus, man, it gets stuck there. And, but, but now I understand, I know what it is. I understand what the energy is, which before I didn't know how to wield it. I didn't know how to move it. I didn't know how to put it into my heart um, and let it radiate out. And so now I can use my heart for what it was meant for, mm. you know, and, and, and I can start to, to really use my heart because I just didn't understand. I'm not even going to lie. People were talking about the, you would talk about your heart and then I'd be like, and you know, and I'm like, you're like, I just feel this energy. And I'm like, uh, why don't I feel anything? Is something wrong with me? I'm broken. And, no, you're not and broken. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I feel my heart, you know, but that's how I felt, right? That right. was the feeling. Like, I was like, I feel my heart, but like, these people are like talking, like their hearts are radiating. And I'm like, well, it yeah. reminds me of the Grinch, honestly, right now. All I'm seeing is the Grinch is still Christmas with his like little <laughs> tiny heart. And then it grows, right? Three times bigger. And like, by the end, they're all happy. <laughs> like, that's what's coming to me right now. <laughs> I could be the Grinch, although I love Christmas. But yeah, I think in a way, I think in a way, I was very good at because I do. My heart is it's it's big, but it, the, the, like I said, from and I communicate a lot. So from the mind to the throat to the heart, perfect. I can pull stuff in from the macrocosm, but from the roots up, yeah. it's stuck at the solar plexus it's totally, it was totally stuck there. So yeah, I think, you know, part of my heart was just, it was closed off. Mm. I, it was closed. I was like, yeah. okay, like I, I feel heart energy, but like, you know, the way I hear people talk about, and my heart's radiating out and I'm all, yeah, I felt that a couple times in my life, but let me be realistic with myself. Am I really feeling my heart fully? And the answer is no. And then I'm like, okay, why not? You know, why, why, what, what's coming up and, and the old narratives, the old stories, the, the protection, you know, the masculine protecting the heart, the inability to open it up because of fear, um, because it might get hurt, because it might get broken. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And if you you're know, disconnected, so yeah, from the root chakra, right, there's no safety protection there. That's correct. That's yeah. absolutely correct. Where then the heart would be open from, from the third eye down. So, of course, it all sounds intellectual and beautiful. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, there is this beauty and the connection between that and my heart. Hmm. but it didn't allow for meaningful true relationships to blossom either yeah so so that was totally missing. Right. it was you know what I, it was and i'm really i'm really realizing it now you know i'm getting it there's a part part of me that's getting it and now it's like holy shit like what can i do with this heart of mine my god it's gonna, uh, gonna well your heart over. is your compass, you know, too, right? Like when you listen to your heart and you follow the desires of what you want to experience and create, you know, the heart is just such a beautiful, beautiful space to be within. But when there's nothing but like fear, <laughs> it, oh, yeah. you know, and it's like just shut down, like, yeah, it tends to be like more lonely and, you know, we feel more isolated or unseen, unheard, unappreciated. And I think even the inner child is truly connected through like our heart and our high heart when we can tap into, you know, curiosity and like innocence and playfulness, right? And laughter and joy. That's a heart-based um, place to be in. Absolutely. 
And now that I, I think now that I've done this, you know, I'm like, shit, I'm going to astro project everywhere. Right. I'm going to be scaring people. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I, I have done that with intention. There's moments where I've meditated or been in, you know, an altered state. And yeah. like, if I know I can't, I'm not going to see the person or be able to talk to them, I drop right into the heart because that's where it just feels like pure intention, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's that mm -hmm. goodness, um, that the love, that love that I have and I can't express it. I can't let it manifest in the physical, but I can mm -hmm. do like the whole Care Bear, <laughs> the Care yeah, Bear where, you know, they like shoot it out from the belly. <laughs> yeah. So I just go into the heart and I let that energy and same thing, like this is the the person that I want to send, you know, the, these messages to or, you know, this information to. And sometimes it yep. is forgiveness or it's whatever healing needs to happen that can't happen through communication or physical connection and contact. Um, so to drop into the heart is a beautiful way to maneuver. And with the chakras, from my own experience, the more you attune to your body and you understand your chakras and you start working to, like you said, clear out wounded, stuck, dense energies and get those wheels moving like healthy, organically, getting them in alignment with each other. Um, our divine gifts, our psychic abilities, whatever you want to call it, it, it makes room for them to naturally start coming in. And I always feel like it's um like a faucet where it will just be a slow drip so that you're not overwhelmed. But then there's other times where like the faucet's turned on and it's just like massive, like flowing uh, of energy. And that's where we get like upgrades and ascension symptoms. I've been having massive energy um, around my allergies, like the, since May, they've just been kicking my butt nonstop and it had calmed down. But here with this past week and Lionsgate and, and just the energy that we're in astrologically, um, I know like my third eye and my crown are just, you know, in my throat chakra as well. They're all just kind of working through the, the, the pressure points of the allergies and my my face. And so I'm like kind of excited about, all right, when I get through this and I clear it out, like how will my third eye expand more, you know, because now there's room for clean healed energy to come in and create. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think connecting it that way helps people to understand the energy and how to move it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you said something drop into your heart. And for me, I'm moving up into my heart. Mm. So it's kind of funny because I think there's maybe a two prong thing happening here, right? It's not just you draw, you actually pull up into like you right. emerge right into the it's heart. Just finding a way to be present from your heart space. You're not in the yeah. mind. You know what I mean? The mind is shut down. It's not trying to be logical and solve problems or make things up. You know what I mean? It's not the monkey mind. <laughs> It's like there's silence there. You're just in your heart space, so whether you drop into it or rise into it. I think it's right. just being present with awareness from that chakra. Yeah. So, and I think, so I would say, you know, emerging into or blossoming into, or, you know, even seeing these visuals of like the Lotus and which have been such a huge, you know, that has been coming to me so much. Like before I was like, oh yeah, the lotus, the lotus, the lotus. But these are visuals that are actually emerging in my subconscious mind, right? I, I can see them so clearly. And and I think it's because I'm blooming, right? I'm blooming. And a lot of it was pulling all of that from the roots, like starting with the roots, you know, and pulling up that, that the nutrients that are needed so that I could blossom so that the, the, the heart could open up and blossom and just, but the connection there, and it's really crazy because I'll tell you this physiologically in the body, somatically, you will feel the shift because I can feel it 
in my solar plexus completely. And I, and I even get like a, a stomach ache kind yes. of when it's yeah, stuck. Absolutely. I get, I get this like nauseous and then, and then, you know, for, you know, for you people, I don't know if you want to know, I'm going to tell you everything, but you know, <laughs> then I have a movement because I'm like, it has to release that whatever's stuck there. Right. You got to purge and it out. You got to purge it out, but it's, and then, and then it's able to move into my heart as mm. pure energy. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, whatever's moving up is going to be good and healthy for it. So I am really, um, really been working with the chakra energy internally and starting with the sexual energy and moving that up. And that has been one of the most powerful healing tools that I have ever tapped into yeah. I mean, to the point where I'm not even getting pain in my uterus like I was before from cramps. So this energy, the sexual energy and pulling up from the roots and moving it up and, and allowing it to radiate through your body does heal you. Right. And it shows you what it did is it showed me where the blocks were in my, my, my chakra system. And it completely, the energy would move up, but then you would release, right? So, so if you're looking from a, a, the sexual energy point where it was like, people just release and however they do that, right? So they can do it with a partner, themselves, whatever it is, they release the energy. And now I understand why it's good to harness that energy and hold on to it because as I was moving it up and not abstaining right from from releasing the energy i felt that block in the solar plexus i would have not understood that there was a block there unless i would have abstained there's just no way because i was releasing it and not letting it do its work of healing in the solar plexus into the heart and honestly i've been getting heart pain yeah. So I know that there's a block in my heart. I've been getting pains in my heart and I'm like, oh my God, what is yeah. that? Like That's my so heart common. is healthy. My heart is healthy. Yeah. So I know that it's not that I have to go to the doctor. Something's wrong. Right. I work out. I'm healthy. I'm like, I eat right, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, why am I getting this pain in my heart? And it's because it's been closed off right. in that direction. Absolutely. It, just has. Absolutely. it has. And I'm like, I, why am I doing that to myself? you know, it, but yeah. it's scary. It's freaking scary. Yeah, no, I up. definitely, I've like, <laughs> when you, when you work with the heart, you like, I felt mine stretching, like as if like someone had like fingers in there, like pulling it open, um, or tingly sensations. So like, I can tell by the way my heart gets pressure or like some kind of sensation, like if it's opening, if it's upgrading, Absolutely. And that's what I love about like the chakras, because the more you work with them and understand them in your own body, you start to really understand the symptoms that you're feeling because when they're shut off and they're closed down, right? That's what leads to illnesses and diseases, um, like heart disease, heart failure, you know, heart attacks because people have shut down hearts, but once you're opening them and expanding them, that's totally normal to feel that. There have been times where I was like, holy shit, am I having a heart attack? But I was like in my late 30s. So, yeah. so I know yeah. that yeah. I'm not having a heart attack. It's the heart chakra opening yeah. further because of the healing work that I was doing, moving out the stuck, old, wounded yeah. energy. So yeah. that's really, that's beautiful. I love that. Like, even though <laughs> it's intense and it's it can intense, cause panic. But it is, but it's beautiful because yeah. I'm really learning how to use my heart properly. Right. Like our body has a function, but the heart, like I have always talked about the heart. And even in my older podcasts, I used to just be so intrigued with how, like I always tell people, how could you not think that there's a being that's greater than us? Like, I don't understand how there could be these nothing existing because the heart is just doing its thing like we're not asking it to do it it just does it it's just beating it beats for our entire life like that's crazy that's like a huge job like it's just in there pumping right now i'm not doing any i'm not making if i was responsible for making my heart pump i'd be dead because <laughs> i'm just like i it just do, it just does it you know and i'm like whoa and it's it's vibrating yeah it's vibrating energy yeah. It's 
it's it's pulsating an energy yeah. force and and i understood this but now i've embodied it like i'm right. embodying this which is totally different conceptually we get it but when you embody it holy jesus i'm like i'm almost like what's gonna happen like i don't <laughs> you know what i mean like like you said there's probably hidden gifts in there that i didn't even realize did exist do you right. know which one of them is being able to connect and spiritually talk to people without even talking to them like telekinesis right just a trip yeah. i just so anyway i know this was like not the the full topic but i was like when the heart came up and stuff like that and that's been such a huge thing for me yeah it it it, it, it has and it's very hard and you know I do have my shield in case I need to block it, but I'm allowing it to fully open up now because I'm safe. I don't have, right. it, what, it, it, no one's trying to like, okay, so someone does something that's not good or maybe even decept, like deception, right? Even too, right? I have my shield, I can cut them off. Right, I don't that need to close change, my heart down, yeah. It doesn't change the integrity of the person that I am. I right. know who I am. I trust who I am. I know where I'm going. Right. And what other people do is not my problem. Right. I can't. It's. I just. It, I don't have time right now. Like I'm ready. It's go time, right? It's go time. That's how I feel. It's go time. It's time to right. go. I don't have time for for all this other stuff. And and it is beautiful. So anyway. I just had to say that because there's a lot of insights for me today. So yeah, no, that's hot. cool. But it is an hour is up. So I don't know. Do you have anything else to say? Um, I'm just gonna. Oh, that's funny. I just pulled one other card from a different deck. I figured just to kind of close with, um, and it was the crown chakra. <laughs> And this wasn't even from the chakra deck. So I think the chakras are just wanting a chance to, um, to write, mm -hmm. to have awareness. But with the crown, it's that unlimited self, right? Reaching into your higher, high, you know, the soul, the higher self, whatever you want to like yep. label it, but opening up to, um, like you said, that macro to mm -hmm. the universal Absolutely. consciousness. Um, mm -hmm. And through the crown, it's about like, being able to at attain a uh, life purpose to be able to bring that and anchor that in being connected right with this higher sense of self your spiritual self into your human body self and knowing like your purpose um so yeah and then for you know just people out there right wear your crown have that self-worth, that self-love, you know, have value for yourself and your life and the reason why you're here and just, you know, wear, wear your crown on your head and don't let anyone knock it off. <laughs> I guess that's my final, my final words of advice. <laughs> if you could see me right now, I'm putting the crown on my head. Right. right. There you go. I have my crown on. Um, <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Um, we love you. We will see you next week. Um, I am starting my PhD program this week, so I am sure I'm going to have just so much to share from all that um, class, exploration theory, um, just different readings and and you know reflections and all that kind of stuff. So very excited to bring that information to our listeners. Um, yeah, so there you go. Have a great day. Also, we have the goddess circle. I didn't open up with this. So I do apologize for hopefully those who listen all the way to the end. This is always a long podcast, but um, women of consciousness go on. We are doing a, a retreat, virtual retreat. We also have our goddess circle coming up Friday at six six thirty Eastern standard time for women who are wanting to be part of the goddess circle. Um, you're welcome to join. And we uh, will be talking about harnessing um, tantric or sexual goddess energy. Okay. So there you have it. Okay. We love you and have a good day.